Hey everybody, welcome back to Leosophy. I got three more questions, so I've got to jump right in. Um, I always say that. Uh, let's see. What is the difference between club soda, mineral water, and seltzer? Uh, well, all three of those are carbonated. Oh uh, well, yeah. You put you wrote sparkling mineral water. Uh, I want to make sure because yeah. Anyway, all three of those are carbonated water, which just means that carbon dioxide is dissolved in the water, which gives it like a bubbly texture and it just alters the overall experience compared to just drinking plain old water. Um, seltzer, that's all it is. It's water that's been carbonated. Water with carbon dioxide dissolved in it, so it's fizzy and bubbly and all that. Um, on the flip side, club soda actually has uh, potassium, there's two potassium salts in it, um, bicarbonate something sulfate. Potassium bicarbonate and potassium sulfate. And that gives it um, sort of a, even though it's potassium and not sodium, it actually makes it kind of salty. And that's actually, it adds an extra depth of flavor and it's one of the reasons why you're more likely to see club soda, in addition to the fact that it comes in big old liters, it's one of the reasons why you'll see club soda more commonly used in cocktails than uh, just plain old seltzer. Because that, that addition of a salty flavor actually adds a depth to uh, whatever cocktail they're making. Um, and then lastly, with mineral water, whether it's sparkling or not, the big thing that makes it mineral water is that it contains other compounds based on wherever that particular spring is located. So, I mean, it can be a number of things. It can, it can, it can even have sulfur in it, which sounds repugnant because it's flipping brimstone, but it can add uh, some addi additional depth to it. So. That's, that's the difference between those three. So they're actually quite different. They, they all start off as carbonated water, but uh, whatever else is in it changes the actual flavor profile, and it can be pretty dramatic. It's one of the reasons why a lot of people uh, really like LaCroix and the uh, flipping scented seltzer. That's really all LaCroix is. But a lot of people, they hate uh, mineral water because it has compounds that they perceive as bitter. And I personally love mineral water, but... I totally get why some people don't like it. It's because of those additional minerals found in, in whatever springs they belong to. So I hope that answers that question. Let's see, what else we got? What is barbecue, open parentheses, I am not American, close parentheses. They're probably not Korean either, because um, they have it too. Although they're very different. In fact, really, it's kind of a misnomer to call Korean barbecue barbecue. Okay, okay, okay. Getting ahead of myself. Um, barbecue is an American phenomena especially associated with both the South and Texas, and no, I don't consider Texas exclusively to be the South. It's kind of got its own identity. And, uh, and uh, by the way, I'm not Texan, so I'm not I'm not just like saying it just out of some weird uh, uh, affinity for Texas. Just, uh, I think they're, they're unique enough to not constitute as a Southern state. Anyway, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, American barbecue. Uh, there's a big misconception around the world, uh, especially in Europe, I've noticed, that they think that barbecue just means meat with barbecue sauce. Well, barbecue sauce isn't necessary for barbecue. What makes barbecue barbecue is that you take meat, and preferably you have a pit, like literally a pit for it, but it's not 100% necessary in my opinion. I'm not going to split hairs on that. But what you do is you cook that meat for an obscenely long length of time at a very low heat. So low that you end up with pink rings that are actually caused by a chemical change that has nothing to do with raw meat. A lot of people, especially foreigners, when they first see the pink ring, they're like, oh my god, it's not done. No, it's, it's more than done. These chemical changes break down the muscle fibers and the collagen in the meat. And so, it, it's kind of funny, like when you're first cooking meat, if it's undercooked, it's very tough. And when you cook it a certain length, it becomes more tender. But then if you overcook it, it becomes tough again. Well, if you go beyond that, and then low temperatures are very important for that, then things start breaking down and it becomes even more tender. And that's what barbecue is. It's meat that's been cooked very low, very long, preferably with wood chips, preferably in a pit, that has developed uh, both the flavors of whatever's burnt, whether it's charcoal or wood, preferably wood, and has a texture that is just falling apart in your mouth. That's what makes it barbecue. The sauce is just a secondary thing. You can, and depending on the location, it's 
it's actually one of the few things that in America location is like really important. You know, people love to say that we don't have a culture and all that, but when it comes to food, uh, which is a huge part of culture, there's a lot of regional variation. And, you know, some of the most heated debates are about hot dogs and pizza, but people don't really talk a lot about barbecue because it's, but it's very different. Like in, uh, I can't remember if it's North Carolina or South Carolina, but one of the Carolinas, I think it's South Carolina, they are severe about just adding a kind of vinegar sauce to it. And on the flip side, in the more northern states and also in the deep south, they're more, they have a bigger affinity for the actual, what people call barbecue sauce, which is just, it's like ketchup and molasses and uh, vinegar and just a few other things. It's, it's not like a very complicated sauce. And then uh, in other places, like in Texas, a dry rub is really all you want. It's, it's more minimalist. Bottom line, that's what barbecue is. It's, it's meat that's been cooked very low and slow until it is chemically changed to a point that is just falling apart. That's what it is. Highly recommend you try it at some point uh, in your life. It's definitely a, uh, in my opinion, actually, yeah, if I were to have to pick, like if there was some kind of food Olympics, and you had to pick what food represented what country, I think barbecue would represent the United States. That's that's kind of our our iconic food, in my opinion. That's very subjective, but that's that's what I would go with. Anyway, let's see. Now, uh, what's the last question? Hang on, I gotta pause it for a second because I gotta I gotta adjust my uh, mic. Okay, there we go. Um, last question: Are what are leeches? Are they related to mosquitoes? Um, not at all. Not even well. Okay, no, not at all. Um, <laughs> um, mosquitoes are insects, and insects are kind of arthropod, and arthropods have an exoskeleton. They do not have a spine, but that's really, the lack of a spine is about the only thing that they have in common with leeches. Leeches are actually a kind of annelid, which just is a very fancy word for worm. Um, and there's all sorts of different annelids. What they all have, kind of have in common is that they have no, they have no spine, but instead of an exoskeleton, they have... Uh, segmented bodies. That's that's the big thing. Their their bodies are divided up into often like hyper symmetrical segments. Like what I mean by that is there's not a tremendous amount of variation in width or length or or alteration of of those segments. Even when you have additional parts attached to it, uh, like when you think about the uh, uh, what's that thing called a uh, clitellum or something like that, like the, the little bumpy ring around like an earthworm that you see. Um, even with that, like if you actually look at the segments of, of that little area, it's really the same width and length as uh, the rest of the worm, excluding like where it kind of tapers off at the ends. It's, it's kind of interesting how that works. And it, it makes a lot of sense because, I mean, when you have everything divided into those segments, what's going to go wrong like in the development of that organism? So leeches are annelids, and you can kind of tell that because they're soft-bodied. They definitely don't undergo any kind of transformation, you know. So a leech isn't like a larvae uh, of an insect or anything. It's not going to turn into something completely different. Um, the yeah, soft body, no spine, um, segments, stuff like that. That's that's really what what makes a worm a worm. Uh, I mean, and there's all sorts. And it's some that are just so diverse uh, compared to. What, when when people think of worms, at least in the United States, uh, they think of earthworms. Well, I mean, there's polychaetes, like bobbit worms, totally different looking. There's those new uh, polychaetes that were found under uh, the Antarctic ice that look like toupees with mouths. Um, they're just they're they're very peculiar, and there's just a lot of diversity among annelids um, that they kind of get overlooked because again, the, the go-to thought when it comes to an annelid is the earthworm, just your run-of-the-mill nightcrawler or whatever from a bait shop. But yeah, leeches are worms, so something worth noting. Just because they're they're both uh, uh, sanguivores, you know, mosquitoes and leeches, I mean, there's there's sanguivores in just about every class and clade of life. Uh, there are there are even butterflies in East Asia that uh, drink drink blood instead of nectar. So it's a it's a very peculiar adaptation given how uh, nutrient poor blood is. It's very uh, strange that, that any niche got filled with that, but there you go. So I hope that answers that question. Uh, yeah, like, share, subscribe, keep asking questions, and uh, incidentally, the best way to reach me for questions, the, at least that's what it's kind of evolved into, is via Gab and Minds. So yeah, check out the links if you have a question. It's probably the best uh, way of reaching me. 
Thanks. Like, oh, yeah, I already said like, share, subscribe, and that Bye.